Is this a non-sweary show? No, you can swear as much as you like. Okay, Hello, I just need to know. <laughs> and welcome to another episode of ProfitCast. Today is Sunday, April thirteenth, and we are the Thought Prophets. The Thought Prophets is a secular atheist group dedicated to the promotion of continuous learning, open discussion, skepticism, and science. You can find us on the web by going to our web page, obviously www.thoughtprophets.com. Follow us on Twitter by ser- Twitter. Wow, by searching for ProfitCast. This beer is already getting to me. And join in our discussions on Facebook and Google Plus by simply searching for Thought Profits. Wow, I once again, eh, again, am your host David Curry, and co-hosting with me in what seems like to be a new fo- formation of the dynamic duo, Candice Bell. Hey. Hello, and joining us tonight are two very special guests, both of which are prominent act, uh, activists on Twitter, Ra, or at Franco Soup, and Aiden, or at uh, Atheist Blobfish. How are you doing tonight? Hi. Hi. Oh, I'm really tired. I know. It's the, <laughs> we're, well, I guess we should ask, uh, how are you doing this morning? Right, yeah, because we're kind of putting you out there. It's 5.30 in the morning where you guys are at. Yeah. Alrighty. So, um, Lovely. I, I definitely wanted to find out um, more about both of you. Uh, it's a part of the reason for bringing you on the show today. And actually, oh, did I totally interrupt, David? Hmm? Oh, no, no, not like, at all. Yeah, let's get started. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, um, yeah, well, I mean, to, you know, basically to you know go off from what you're saying there, we uh, whenever we have new guests on the show, we always like to do a little bit of a, an about you just to figure out what kind of uh, labels you subscribe to, if any, or uh, what you identify with, and kind of a little background, religious history, you know, how you've come to uh, these conclusions and whatnot. Um, whoever ladies wants first. to go first. Yeah, ladies first. I suppose we can be a little bit courteous and chivalry here. <laughs> um, Ra, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. Um, well, I'm Ra. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm 36. I feel like I'm on a dating program. Good thing there's no video. Um I'm. Um, I've always uh, been an atheist for, you know, the sake of, of assigning myself a label. But um, I have grown up around a lot of religion. Um, my mother is Brazilian and a very devout Catholic, and um, her family they're, they're all very Catholic and mm-hmm. fanatical. Um, but I, I managed to escape that. Um, I. Like I said, I've always been an atheist. Um, I'm a nurse. Um, I don't really know what else to say about myself. <laughs> awesome. All right. Um, no problem. We'll, I'm sure we'll get around to more. <laughs> Gee. All right. So, Aiden, tell us a little bit about yourself. What, uh, um, you know, what do you... Yeah, uh, I'm 27. I am a Ponzi actor. Um... <laughs> I suppose I'm an atheist, I'm a, I'm a gravitist, I'm an evolutionist. Um, I don't think there's much else to say. I, I used to be a Catholic, but more of a cultural Catholic than an actual Catholic, so um, it's more sort of Catholic guilt brought on by my Irish parents. I, I hear I'm that. Catholic. Uh, I, I, I still know most parts of the Catholic Mass, uh, and I will still take communion. Like just for a laugh. Just for giggles. Um, at what point did you make the switch? Like, did you realize that you didn't subscribe to those beliefs, or did you never? Um, I, I, I never actually thought about like, uh, like being a Catholic. I never thought I was putting Jesus in my mouth on a Sunday morning. Um, I, it, it, it just never sort of bothered me that much. Uh, but then when I got a bit older and I found out. The sort of uh, the restrictions that the Catholic Church puts on things, whether it's science or uh, contraception, birth control, women's rights, things like that. Uh, that was when I just sort of started distances of distancing myself from the label of Catholic. I was a lapsed Catholic, um, cultural Catholic, and then one day I just decided to say, "Fuck it, I don't believe in imaginary beings. Uh, I'm an atheist." 
and so raw, I mean, was like there. You said that you've always really kind of been uh, atheist, but I mean, did were your but your parents were more Catholic? I mean, did they involve you in all in the church or anything like that? Um, well, my father um, is an atheist, um, so I think that's probably where I was spared um, all the wacky bollocks. Um, <laughs> my mother, like I said, she's, she's Brazilian, she's a devout Catholic, and um, oh. I lived um, in Brazil on and off, and um, I went to a Catholic boarding school. Um, but even though my father was an atheist, it, there was never any sort of mention much on his part of, you know, this is all rubbish, you mustn't believe in it. He kind of just left me to it. And I remember from a very sort of young age at school thinking, gosh, this is all ridiculous and uh, there's no way I can possibly believe in this. Um, I mean, a bit like Aiden, I guess living in such a large Catholic country um, mm -hmm. and having, you know, a, a very Catholic mother and going to a, a Catholic boarding school. Um, I was involved in the cultural aspects um, of religion. Um, so I too have had um, Jesus in my mouth, um, but he was an exchange student from Madrid. That's another story. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a lie. <laughs> right. <laughs> you mean Jesus, right? The, the Jesus. Yes, well, whatever his name was, he was fabulous. Um, so, yeah, so the cultural side of it, but so I've, I've never, I've never believed in any of it, which growing up in Brazil was a bit of a problem. Um, right, because, yeah. You know, atheists are non-existent. So, I mean, like, um, was there a, uh, like was there ever a point where your parents were kind of at odds with what they were wanting to try and because you said that your mom was pretty devout Catholic yeah I mean it's it's resulted at um, um it's, it's just a bit sad really my mother and I we don't speak anymore um, mm. and it's been sort of about eight years and and I think um, religion was um, the main catalyst. I mean, there are other problems, but religion was the main cat catalyst. And um, I think when I refused to, to take First Communion, um, that's when the problem started, when she knew that um, I was old enough to really rebel and say, actually, I, I don't want this. Mm -hmm. um, that's when the problems really started uh, with her and the rest of the family because I was seen you know, as being um, antagonistic and, and provocative for questioning and going against the status quo. Yeah, and like Candace was saying, I mean, that's really unfortunate that that kind of thing happens. Um, how just a difference of opinion, really, it can tear families apart, and it's ridiculous, yet that's mm. part of Jesus' teaching, really. Oh, it's, I, I think it's actually pretty pretty common unfortunately um, so as a, I guess as a part of that too is um, I know Ra you definitely tweet quite a bit about the Roman Catholic Church um, mm -hmm. but so what's where's the focus there like um, I, I think a lot of athe uh, active atheists have something in particular that they're passionate about as far as like if it's science or faith healing or whatever it is and it seems like that's sort of um, your axe to grind. Yes, it seems like you have some gears <laughs> grinding about this, both of you. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about that? Uh, I mean, I, I think I, I'm, I'm, um, my disdain uh, for religion um, is equitable. I, I, you know, find it all very ridiculous. Um, I do tweet a lot um, about the Catholic Church, and I, and I think for me, and I, it might be the same for Aiden, um, the cover-up of the sexual abuse um, on a global scale has really boiled my piss and I can't <laughs> leave that alone because it's, you know, it's been going on for decades and, I mean, I know the Pope apologised um, this past week, which is absolutely pointless and um, oh, it was... you know it, it was a sort of a political smokescreen it, it's not genuine it's not sincere yeah until he hands over every single pedophile uh, rapist to the police that's absolutely meaningless but um 
that is why I tweet about it because I, I can't bear the thought of all these abused children and who've now got you know many gone on to be adults. Um, I hear stories on Twitter of people who tweet me and say my brother was abused by priests and he committed suicide and or mm. I live with the consequences of abuse on a daily basis. It, you know I have a dysfunctional attitude towards sex now in relationships. It's torn my life apart and. Um, now, had had this been not the Catholic Church, had it been an institution, or you know, I don't know, for for the sake of argument, uh, the the NHS and um, someone had been covering up pandemic sexual abuse, um, the whole thing would have been torn down. But the Catholic Church is just the force in itself. It's, it's like a mafia, and it seems to be this this sort of Teflon coating. Nothing affects it. Nothing tears it down. And and it. Um, the supporters of the Catholic Church seem to completely ignore the abuse and they're so outraged by any criticism of the church that they completely forget that, you know, so many thousands of children were abused. Right, right yeah, I, that's something that I've noticed, um, that it's, they, they set up this, this institution, I actually um, uh, yeah, was uh, baptized Episcopalian and became very, very briefly, Candace is gone, Catholic, um, for a moment there, and yeah, kind of like what you were saying, uh, Aiden, you know, once I started to actually figure out more about the world around me and the reality of the world <laughs> around me, it kind of fell away, but yeah, they kind of set up this institution where, you know, they put these priests on a pedestal where, you know, these are men of God and whatever they do is in the name of God. And so if they are touching you inappropriately, obviously that's that's something that needs to happen because it's God's plan or something. And then yeah. it just it's blown out of proportion. Yeah, um, what, what sickens me is the sort of uh, the useless sort of, like, diatribe that they come out with and it's all, oh, but the Catholic Church does a lot of good in the world, they have a lot of charities and, and things like that. And it's, I, I, I always, always just say, well, Hitler was nice to dogs. Um, it, 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 that <laughs> he, does not he was excuse, a good painter. Yeah, uh, that, that does not excuse, like, centuries of systematic abuse that affects possibly billions of people. It's, 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 it's just frightening. I don't care what they do missionary wise mm -hmm. it, it, it will not mean anything to me until people um, are safe from sexual predators mm. um, and there are a lot of protected sexual predators in the Catholic Church and oh yeah that is only the biggest of their problems uh, by even now with all the uh, the Magdalene laundries uh, all the babies that were sold uh, for profit to the Catholic Church, uh, people that cannot find their parents because of closed adoptions, destroyed mm -hmm. records, and things like that. It's, it's, it's just vile. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, even their, their missionaries are kind of causing a little bit of harm because these are the people who are going to Africa and they're denying the people, you know, contraceptives and yeah. helping to spread AIDS in these countries. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah, the, 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 yeah they just um, they prefer to just hand a Bible out, uh, maybe some rosary beads, um, then say, "Here, use this condom, and maybe you won't get AIDS, and maybe you won't die horribly." Um, it's 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 just disgusting. And the Catholic Church have known about the benefits of contraception for probably fifty years, and they are still yet to do anything. Not one pope has sat down in a room with a bunch of medical professionals that know what the benefits and all, all the other things to do with contraception are. They haven't sat down and, and, and just listened. If they listened, there was nothing they can argue against, like literally nothing. And like, so either they have all the facts and they're ignoring them, or they aren't willing to listen to the argument. But not not only are they ignoring, um, you know, the the fact that obviously contraception saves lives, but they're actively admonishing it and, you know, sort of vilifying it because it goes against um, their, you know, sort of um, stance on it. And um, I mean, 
I can't speak for other countries, but you know, all my examples will be about um, Brazil. Mm-hmm. But in Brazil, it's still very frowned upon. I mean, people do use contraception in, in bigger cities and where it, you know it's more sort of westernized and liberal. Um, but it's still, if you go to smaller towns, I mean, my mother comes from a community of uh, farmers. Um, both of her parents are illiterate. Um, she's one of 12 children. Wow. Um, yep. Um, and, That's proper Catholic. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, straight um, up. She's, um, and, you know, unusual that only one died because infant mortality um, is, is, you know, the the huge concern um, in Brazil. But um, her brothers and sisters all have large families and their children have large families. You think that it would be a a generational thing where um, now with the access to internet and more information, um, the younger generation will be using contraception, but... um, not not um, in smaller towns in Brazil where the Catholic Church is still very present and it's telling people to have large families because, you know, that's what the Lord wanted. As a result, lots of people are still dying during childbirth. There's a, a huge amount of poverty because if you have 12 children, you simply you can't look after them and right. feed them. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That is one thing that I have noticed with uh, Catholics, because my my mother, she's the oldest of eight, and mm. yeah, they it, it's it definitely seems like not only do they have a war against contraceptive uh, contraceptives, but they're definitely wanting to push people to make more Catholics, yes. make more people for the church. And yeah. obviously, I don't know. Um if you saw this, but um, a couple of years ago there was a very sad case in Ireland, um, Aidan will correct me if I'm wrong, of a, a lady who was denied an abortion. It was a clinical abortion, it was necessary, it was required on clinical grounds. Um, there were some uh, terrible abnormalities uh, with the fetus, um, she mm. became septic and in the end she died um, because she was denied an abortion. This was two years ago or maybe three years ago, you know, so still very recent, and this is to do with the Catholic Church, the uh, medical practitioners and the hospital made it very clear that, you know, this is a Catholic country, um, we don't do abortions, and this person died. I don't understand how an archaic Bronze Age institution like the Catholic Church has any place in my uterus or my reproductive health, making decisions for everyday people, they you know they have no grasp on reality whatsoever, and they're causing untold harm. Absolutely, and you know that's actually um, uh, interesting that you bring that up because you like like you said you're actually a nurse. I mean, do you ever run into people's faith? Uh, like coming in the way of you actually being able to give them medical care or it, like what kind of issues do you run into being an atheist and being a nurse? In England none because um, we are by the majority very secular um, I have had a couple of issues um, in the past, funnily enough, um, not uh, with Catholics. I've, I've had issues uh, in, when I was a hospital nurse with um, blood donation, uh, blood transfusion, pardon, um, with uh, Jehovah's Witness, and uh, I've had issues with um, Muslims who've refused things like Plexane, which is a, a heparin uh, type injection, a sort of a blood thinner, for want of, of a better description, uh, because it, it contains pork gelatin. Um, I've had um, Muslims refuse vaccinations because they they thought it contained pork gelatin. It actually didn't, um, but obviously they read it on the Daily Mail, which is this terrible. Wait, 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 wait! Did you say hawk or pork? <laughs> pork gelatin. Oh, um, that's shit. If it was hawk gelatin, I'd have had that. I'd have had that. <laughs> right. No pork. Um, so very, very rarely, I mean, religion isn't really really an issue. I've had patients when I worked in hospital who were in stage of life who wanted um, prayer, um, mm-hmm. which um, I can you know, easily arrange with uh, chaplaincy. 
but religion rarely comes up in the delivery of healthcare for me. Huh. And that's interesting. Well, I, it's England's primarily secular, so I guess um, I know in the U.S. it comes up all the time. All and in the time. fact, I don't think that there is a secular hospital in my area. Like, uh, well, they're all Catholic hospitals, and then um, but with each of my kids, it was like seriously having to refuse, like having somebody come in and like. Um, uh, talk to me um, because they have chaplains available all the time, um, and you you have to tell them no. So mm. it's not something that you can opt into. You have to opt out of, which is just interesting, I, I guess. Yeah. Um, the the differences. With the UK, we're not um, secular by sort of government order. Uh, right. We are uh, we are actually Anglican or Church of England. And it's quite strange how we're not secular, but we are secular, and mm -hmm. you guys are secular, but you are fucking crazy Christians. <laughs> right. And you let Jesus make so many decisions. Well, like, you guys, like, didn't you have a politician recently come out? Constantly with, 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 like, with bills from like, like presidents and shit. Jesus must just spend all of his time signing in laws. When he's not in your mouth. Yeah. Right, yeah. Force feeding you his blood and his body. Yeah. His penis. <laughs> <laughs> the penis, because you have a hole that only Jesus can fill. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, we have a couple questions from all over the place. Um, of course, if you want to... If you can't do the question and answer, you can tweet us at ProfitCast. Um, I got one from Twitter here from Cordy Mendoza. Um, and this is for both of you. Is there anything you dislike about the atheist movement? And he wants to point out, Ra, that doesn't mean the atheist bowel movement. <laughs> Aiden, you go first. I've spoken enough. Um, this... I, I don't like calling it a movement, which which I suppose would be a bit controversial. Um, I, 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 I don't like the idea of just lumping everyone in. It's the same thing. Uh, some people stand for different things, uh, and I think you should sort of understand that before you call atheism a movement. Um, there are some people that I, I like uh, that will concentrate more on the humanist side, there are some people that are more anti-theistic, um, mm -hmm. and I, I, I don't think you should lump everyone together. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a great identifier for like conferences and things like that, but um, I, I just don't think you should expect everybody to adhere to a certain set of principles to be classed as an atheist. Um, I, I, I think atheist would be the least descriptive label of me. Hmm. So then, I guess, how, how do you guys feel about the, uh, welcome back, Candice, um, how do you feel about the Atheism Plus movement that's kind of happening within this? Oh, movement? Atheism Plus died ages ago, just let it go. <laughs> I, I genuinely, genuinely would not give them the airtime, because they're just okay. a bunch of fuckholes. Awesome, awesome, I completely agree with you, Atheism Plus is garbage! Um... So, Rod, did you have anything that you dislike about the atheist movement or the? Um, the again, I, I have to agree with um, Aiden on this. I, I'm sort of reluctant to call it an atheist movement, although, you know, my sort of opinion on atheism plus is that they are a movement of terrible, you know, diarrhea, sort of clostridium <laughs> difficile, smelly. Um, messy, really ghastly, and should just be put in the sluice and forgotten about. A um, bunch of useless cunts. I'm oh, sorry, I said yeah. cunt. I'm trying not to say cunt. I've said it three times now. You oh, can cunt. say it as um, big cunt as much as you like. So, as, as Aiden said, that's really all the time I'm giving this fuck weasels. Um, but, atheist movement, I mean, the only thing that we have in common. Um, is our lack of belief in gods. And I think it's arrogant to assume that only atheists care about uh, human rights and about activism and, you know, sort of uh, capable of benevolent acts. I know many theists um, who are 
wonderful people and much better than many atheists that I've ever met. Um, so atheist mm. movements, I, personally I think it's a load of bollocks. I think um, you are what you are, you bring to the table whatever you want to bring and whether or not you believe in gods, it's absolutely irrelevant. Awesome, well said. Um, Alright, so a couple more questions here. Or I guess, Candice, did you have anything to add to the hate of the atheist movement going on? <laughs> oh, no, I actually, I'm trying to get caught back up because my internet connection I know, keeps dropping, keep... and so I keep disappearing and coming back on. Wait and on up, so. Yeah, Canada, Canada is stealing all of our broadband. <laughs> um, all right, so we got one here from... And I'm sorry, dude, I can never remember how to pronounce your names. I, I think it was... Aurelian? Sure. Um, speaking of the Catholic Church, what do you guys think about the mosque-slash-cathedral of Cordoba, where the Vatican legally bought it back to Cordoba City? So do you do share you... the fear of Catholics and Muslims that the monument would be modified and denied its history? Thank you. I was starting to lose track there. Um, I, I, I have no idea what this thing is, and I don't think I've ever heard of it. Um, but maybe Ra has? Um, no, not not in any depth, actually. Um, I'm really sorry. It's, it's not. Yeah. I'm really um, if, 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 you, if you tell this lady to tweet me, or lady or gent, I can't see the picture, um, I, I, I will research it and give her my thoughts, or him my thoughts. Yeah, I'll just defer you to my secretary, Aiden. He'll do my, my answer. There we go. And I haven't heard anything else about it uh, either, but it's, yes, we'll uh, we'll get around to that, I guess. Yeah. Um, Gosh, how dare people ask intelligent questions? I know, how dare they? This is a... One of yeah, I, 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 I genuinely, genuinely only came on to talk about child fucking, so... <laughs> <laughs> That's all that we're here for. Um... So here's a, another one from uh, Bobby, Bobby Foster. Uh, he's curious how the different Church of England is compared to the Catholic, Catholic churches when it comes to how in-your-face they are with abortion and all around. Be this or go the hell, bitches. Type yeah, uh, he didn't the, say bitches. Yeah, the Anglican Church or Church of England tends to just sort of shut up. Uh, they don't really, like, uh, they often say, oh, blah, 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 this, this is a sin, life is precious. But they're not Catholic about it. Like they don't go, you cannot do this. They just say, uh, I, I, I think it's just sort of like be careful of your choices. But they won't come out and sort of sit either side of the fence. They do a similar thing on gay marriage, where the sort of Archbishop of Canterbury sort of comes out and says some nice things about gays, and then in a sermon two weeks later he'll say that it's a sin. Um, it's it's hmm. it's just sort of like there's no actual message sent out. It's just a series. Of useless platitudes that Eddie people sort of take from what they exactly. take from what they will. Well, they're the the cake or death church. So. Uh, yeah. The, yeah, no, See, in Dress to Kill, um, he he talks about the Anglican Church and how it's, um, and we're gonna take the sermon from a magazine today and how blasé um, it it seems to be. So that's interesting that that's. How it's actually, um, or like how he portrayed it, seems pretty spot on. Mm -hmm. All right, and we have more we, questions. Yeah, we do have a question from uh, your favorite person, apparently, Ra, Mister Gamma Atheist, David. <laughs> He's been whining about you all he, uh, night. <laughs> he wants me to ask you sincerely, why do you hate him? What's the what's going on there? Okay, well. It's just that he's a better cat lady than I am, and I, I'm just so jealous. And also the sexual tension between us, it's unbearable. I can't go on anymore. He just needs to ravish me, and then we can move on. I'm booking my ticket to Florida now. <laughs> well, I love you, you David. There's oh, your answer, he's David. He's going to be so happy. He was, he was so whiny earlier. <laughs> Uh, it's awesome. So, 
I think that's really all of the questions that we have here, unless there's something else on Twitter. I don't know. I got so many windows open up here. Oh, oh, Jeremy, that's his name. Um, he is trying to uh, El- elaborate uh, um, elaborate on that mosque. Um, but the mosque that's been turned into a cathedral, and the Catholic Church has the right to buy it back, and now has all rights to modify it since they have power over it. So I guess that Let's... there was a mosque that was purchased by yeah. the Catholic Church that is now being turned into a cathedral and yeah. they're probably screwing up with all of the shit inside of it and Muslims yeah. are um, I, I, I just, just, just uh, From what I can gather, um, I tend to work big to small uh, and I think uh, if the Catholics and Muslims want to fight over uh, a building and incite religious hatred and things like that. They are perfectly welcome to carry on as long as it doesn't affect innocent people. Uh, I, I really, really couldn't give a shit what they do with their land. Oh, we could, we could. Um, I mean, I'm not a parent, um, but we could work on on the premises of parenthood. If they're going to fight about it, their toy, just take it away and turn it into a gay bar. Yes. There we go. <laughs> that would be perfect. Up everything. Neither of them ever want to touch. Yes, it. yes, yes, yes. But then, then everybody would win. Exactly. Oh yeah, the the priests would have a place to go. No, yeah, they, no, they no, would love don't it. Don't like no, unless it was it was. You're thinking of a nursery. That's, oh, sure. that's where priests would go. Not a gay bar. So it's a gay bar that also has a daycare. No, uh, oh, attached to it. Coming. Oh it's, shit. <laughs> That's a novel idea. Uh, <laughs> wow. Oh, uh, good. Definitely. You're not a regular yeah. Richard Branson, aren't you? You were <laughs> playing there for the ages. There we go. Um, so I guess that's as good as a transition as any. Um, getting back to the Catholic Church and talking about the pedophile priest scandal and the, the recent updates that's been happening with that. Um, well, go ahead, Kim. That was a transition for you. Oh, oh, thank you. I'm so glad you came up with it for me. Um, that was really fucking smooth. That was really smooth. Yeah. They call me a surprise. Well, actually, I did want to talk to you guys more about. Um, I know Raw touched on it earlier, and I've been in and out, so you guys may have totally covered it by now. Um, but with Pope Francis apologizing, I wanted to get your perspective as well, Aiden, um, on on the apology. And also, it looks like they are doing a lot of um, a, a lot of things as far as investigating. Um, yeah. Hmm. If you can call yeah, it. Um, their, their, their idea of investigating is uh, like a murder detective going to court and saying a murder definitely happened. And then the judge saying, do you know who did it? And him saying, yes, a murder definitely happened. That is all they're doing. They're, <laughs> not, saying, they're not saying this guy did it here. He needs to be prosecuted. They're just saying, look, some kids got fucked. That, that 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 is genuinely all they're doing. There's no right. no sort of true apology. Uh, there's no sort of compensation for the families affected. Um, it's 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 just utter bullshit. And can I just say categorically right now, uh, Cardinal George Pell is in amongst the biggest cunts I've ever seen. Mm. The man is just a fucking disgrace. Um, if, if you look for one of his quotes from last year, I believe he said something along the lines of, um, I think it's child abuse. Um, in, in cases of child abuse, the victims aren't entirely blameless. Really? Yeah, um, I, I, I'm pretty sure that's verbatim, actually. Uh. He's just a vile, vile cunt. Yeah, that definitely sounds like a man of God right there. Yeah, and, and, and I think one of them, I think it might have been Pell again, I think he's trying to get some form of insurance available for uh, sort of like future lawsuits so that the Catholic Church wouldn't be too hard done by when they eventually get pillaged for all of their money. Hmm. So... 
That's the sort of level of sickness. There's no, um, there's no sort of apology. There's no um, repentance or penance, which they're so keen to promote in other areas. It's just, um, it's just sort of watching their own backs um, and the backs of small children, obviously. obviously. And the system enables them to, um, you know, not take any personal responsibility. First of all, um, on on a legal basis, because they just get hidden in other parishes, um, so they're never brought to court. But also because. You can just go into a confession booth and ask for you know for forgiveness from another paedophile, mm -hmm. and you're forgiven. You say a few you know a few hail marys, and jobs are good, and then you're ready to do it all over again. And of course, you know, and I've spoken um, about this very openly um, on Twitter. Um, Theists, you know, Catholics and Christians um, have this thing about um, vicarious redemption where they're not too bothered about the suffering of others because, you know, Jesus died for our sins and there's reward at the end of it um, in terms of heaven. So I have heard many Catholics say, oh, yes, you know, the children, but um, they'll go to heaven. So it's OK. Any trauma that they've had as a result of sexual abuse doesn't compare with the wonderful eternal life in heaven. Um, and I had one person, and this was quite recently, and I'm rarely outraged because um, before I worked in the community, I was a prison nurse, and my um, time as a prison nurse was spent mostly on a sex offender's wing. So hmm. I was surrounded by paedophiles. And sex offenders have wings? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Red Bull gives them wings. Um, so I'm rarely affected and, and outraged, but um, this, you know, cunt pickle said um, that the sexual abuse was a blemish on the church. A blemish <laughs> on the church. Blemish, that, not like. Not, but even on the church, it was the fact that it, it was something that affected the church. And, you know, it, the image of the church. And um, I've got this um, psycho stalker, which I um, refer to him as Uncle Festa um, on Twitter. And whenever I uh, tweet the Pope, he tweets me back um, mm -hmm. because, you know, he, we all know he's sitting there furiously having pokey bum wanks to pictures of the Pope. Um, <laughs> and he doesn't like anything terrible being said. Um but he treats me on a daily basis telling me how um, this is all made up, that um, this has been fabricated to uh, tarnish the image of the Catholic Church. Um, really? Yes, he truly believes that, but he's not unique in that sense. Many people believe that, that yes, there has been one or two, you know, rapey priests, and it's been um, blown out of proportion to um, tarnish the image of the Catholic Church. Um, and they have, have no sense of compassion or empathy um, for the victims. They are primarily concerned with the image of the church. And then, of course, they, they say what Aidan had already mentioned before, that they bring up, oh, but the church does charity work. And, well, uh, I mean, someone quoted Stop something the other way. Day. Uh, yeah, so right. I quoted something the other day, and it, and it fits perfectly. If you're looking for the good in the Catholic Church, it's like looking for sweet corn and feces. You might find one or two little bits, but is it really worth it? Are you going to put that in your mouth? Are you going to eat it? You're not. The whole thing is a great big stool sample. It needs slushing. Scuff. Right, right. Yeah, that kind of suffering aspect, you know, that you bring up where these people, they don't have any compassion for the victims, which it's funny how you can think that, it, you know, this is all made up when it's an international issue. Mm -hmm. It's not just happening yeah. in one area, but the suffering aspect that it, it kind of brings up this Mother Teresa complex oh. where, you know, it's... you she have thunder cunt. Right, where you oh, have you shouldn't have brought up her. Sorry. Where you have to suffer in order to actually, you know, gain your reward in heaven, which is just a fucking outrageous piece of bullshit. But yeah, I'm sorry I brought yeah, up. Mother, Mother Teresa had to suffer in some of the 
the finest hospitals that America has to offer. So <laughs> yes, she, what she, she must have really struggled flying back first class and then being treated at a, a very very expensive uh, hospital on the Catholic Church's dime, which would be uh, the the sort of Catholics' dime, um, and then having to travel back and enjoying the suffering of the people she was uh, treating. Mm -hmm. She actively denied um, people analgesia in basic care um, and there's a quote which actually makes me feel really sort of bilious rage when I read it and it's about a person who says to her that she's in terrible pain, she's asking for pain relief and she tells the person uh, actually that pain that you're feeling, you should feel it. That is the kiss of Jesus. She, yes. She would actively ask people, well, not ask, she would deny them any pain relief whatsoever um, to, you know, bring them closer to God. But whilst at the same time, when she had, I think she had cardiac problems, um, and as Aidan said, she flew first class to uh, the best hospitals in America to be seen by cardiologists. Um, she took funds which were meant to build hospitals and care facilities and um, used to uh, build convents and other religious institutions and I think probably pocketed quite a lot of it. Um, she wasn't, you know, as um, Hitchens said, she wasn't a, a friend of the poor. She was a friend of poverty, but not her own poverty, that of other people. She was an absolute thunder cunt and I can't believe that she is revered and loved as she is, and, and portrayed, you know, by this, you know, by people as being the saint. She really wasn't. And uh, she will be a saint within, I think, I think we've got about 30 years to wait. Well, hopefully I'll be dead by then. <laughs> Frost. Maybe. Um, wow. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I never really, uh, you know, uh, when I was religious, never really heard a lot of bad things about Mother Teresa, uh, Teresa until I actually got out of it. And, yeah, she would, just the fact that she would take on millions and millions of dollars, and yet millions and millions of people were dying under her yeah. care. <clears throat> or, well, not my, um, my old head teacher told me, and my old head teacher was a nun, Told me that uh, mother. That I, I remember her saying it to me. And she said she's not all she's cracked up to be. She told me that when I was about eleven, wow. and, uh, and then I, I didn't really discover any more about it until I was about seventeen, eighteen. Um, but I, I I had like really good teachers, and I had a good priest when I was younger. Um, he would never abused me once. Um, I'm quite that, offended. Uh, weren't you good looking enough? Uh, no, I, I, I'd say I was too good looking. I just think once he'd had me, there was nowhere else to go. Uh, right. So, um, yeah, but I, I, I had a really nice priest. Uh, still still speak to me. He's a nice guy. Um, he used to play cards with my granddad and sort of like drink whiskey and stuff. He was really cool. Um, hmm. Currently, in my sort of former parish, uh, we have a priest who is just a comedy of errors. Um, he's a former alcoholic. Uh, he's <laughs> overbearingly sexist um, and about four years ago at my aunt's funeral um, he uh, he sent two collection plates around what one for him? Wow. <laughs> yeah for, uh, for the church lights <laughs> <laughs> nice. which, which, which I found fucking hilarious oh, that's, that's amazing and, and, ev and everybody just went straight for their bags and got their purses out and things like that and I was like what the Fuck are you doing? Don't give this cunt any money. <laughs> Don't double dip in there. Come on. Jesus Christ! The guy was getting like a hundred quid backhander to do the funeral, <laughs> and, and and then all of a sudden he's doing two collections, and the church was fucking packed. <laughs> You've got to admire his ingenuity. Oh, Seriously. it's just perfect. It's just clever fellow. Yeah, yeah. that guy would you're do talking, well. Are you talking about the collection plate and um? And this is one of the things, I mean, I'd, I'd never really attended church um, as a child, very, very sporadically. Um, but Brazil is very poor. And 
when they pass the collection plate around, these people are putting money in, and this is money that they don't have, and they won't be able to feed their children because they're having to put that money in the collection plate, and it's really frowned upon if you don't. Yeah. Um, when, when, I, when? Sorry, carry on, Rob. No, no, darling, that's fine. You carry on. Um, yeah, when I, I worked in Lourdes for a few years, um, like I, I used to go over and do a week or two every year for about four or five years. Uh, I just look after old people, and um, I, I'm not sure of the PC term for uh, disabled people. Is it disabled people? Disabled, um, yeah. yeah um, I, I, so I'd go over and uh, I, and I saw collection plates being handed to mentally disabled people, and mentally disabled people taking money from their pockets and putting them in to uh, collection plates and things like that. Uh, also in Lourdes, they encourage you not to give to the poor. Uh, and, and genuinely, you are warned so many times to not give to the poor. It, 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 it's actually laughable. Like, Watch that home. People are shown around the domain, and it is a domain, it is fucking huge. Like, seriously, Google it. The, like the landmass is just enormous. It's really beautiful in a sort of cheap, contrived way. Like mm. there's five sort of churches, and they're all really pretty and golden and shiny. And then you go outside, and there's poverty everywhere, and there's just like cheap, tacky tourist shops uh, and shit pubs. It's um, very crazy. So why? Why do they insist that people don't give to the poor? Um, because they get enough, they're, 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 they're cared for by the Lourdes sort of uh, diocese, um, but you never see the care. Apparently it's done further away from town. Oh, hmm. but if you keep them poor, you keep them dependent as well, don't you? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah they absolutely. Can't, they can't be born, they're not empowered in any way, um, and... You know, again, you, you, you see this in Brazil, and, and um, you've got the favelas, the shanty towns, um, not just in Rio, but you have it everywhere. And the presence of the church is massive. And you have people um, who are secular, such as myself, trying to do, um, you know, some work with education for contraception and, um, you know, hygiene. Um, and they come around and they undo all the good work that you've done because I would do, and I try and do this often as I can, and I haven't done for a few years, actually, I must go back. But, um, you know, you, you do. I did vaccination clinics and um, sexual health clinics, trying to empower the women to make better choices about their reproductive health and tell them you don't have to have 15 children and end up, you know, with a bucket fanny like Raylene from um, right. you know, the herd mentality. Um, <laughs> I've got to get my charger. I have to right the mentality or else Adam uh, will be very cross with me. But, um, you know, you tell these women and, and you get them contraception and the Catholic Church will come around in a couple of weeks and then, you know, admonish them for having contraception in their house. Um, we'll tell them off and we'll tell them that having children is what the Lord has in store for them. They're just doing their duty as good Catholics. And you get these sort of conflicting messages, you see. And I'm just one person. And there are a few more who obviously do this kind of secular work. and um, But it's very difficult to compete with such a force like the Catholic Church. They are hugely present everywhere. As I, you know, I like to call them, it's not omnipresent. They're omni-cunty. They're fucking everywhere. <laughs> and fucking with everyone, especially yeah. children. Um and it's difficult to make any progress in trying to make positive change in trying to empower women to make choices about themselves. Um, you know, it's just, it's really disheartening. You, you get very frustrated. You get very, very frustrated. And that's why I try when I can to, to speak out about it. Yeah, absolutely. Um... And and talking about being being vocal here, um, got a question from Donovan, Mr. Oz Atheist. Uh, Never heard of him. <laughs> of course yeah. not. Um, who? Is That's a shame because he told me that he loves you earlier. So oh, I think he might have just broken his heart. 
I don't know him. Right, I know. I just don't have hearts. <laughs> it's sad. Um, but who influenced you to be vocal about atheism? Raj, do you want to go first? Oh, no, you go first. I've, I've um, I would say it. it sort of came from... Came from Twitter uh, a little bit. I'd read I'd read some Dawkins when I was a bit younger. Uh, I'd read a little bit of Hitchens. I'd read some of his essays, um, and then sort of as I sort of started my initial Twitter account, my sort of my non blogfish. Um, I think Gervais retweeted either Donovan, a uh, secular bloke, or got a spell checker into my timeline one day. I just sort of started following all three of them, um, and then and then I picked up on accounts like uh, Atheist Mel, uh, Ra, my sins, um, <laughs> Jason Alabama was an early one. Um, yeah, just uh, just people like that. Uh, and then as I uh, when I started my Blobfish account, I had the likes of uh, Reeks. Uh, Can't bear him. No, not I. Uh, Gamma, <laughs> Gamma was there. I love him. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, there's just just a collection of people, and I, I, I it, it just suited me because everybody was happy to sort of be irreverent and uh, be non PC, which I really enjoy. Um, and it just sort of sort of came naturally to me. Um, and right I'm on. really good at stealing people's jokes and making them seem like my own. There you go. <laughs> All right. And, Ra, so who influenced you to be vocal about atheism? Um, unfortunately, f for my sins, uh, excuse the pun, but um, <laughs> I'm quite vocal anyway about everything. Oh, um, really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you didn't know <laughs> um, And... That makes my life quite difficult um, because what I'm like on Twitter, that's, that's what I'm like in life. Um, I, just, I can't help myself. <laughs> shit. I can't shut up, um, which means that I'm often in trouble. Um, the only place I'm remotely sort of, you know, a, a, a calm and collected person is at work, but otherwise, um, I'm, I'm a bit of a twat, really. Um, <laughs> I, I, being you seem very I, lovely. <laughs> oh, thank you. Being vocal about atheism, um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, I remember being very, very young. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. And my mother um, had this statue, this massive statue of the Virgin Mary um, in one of our rooms where they put flowers and candles um, every day on it. Wow. And... Um, I remember getting into trouble because um, I was trying to put doll's clothes on it, and um, my mother was logical. Really, my mother was really angry. I remember being about four or five, and this is really vivid. And she was very angry, and she said, "You know, this is sacred, and you can't do that." And and I actually remember saying to her and saying, "No, it isn't. It's just a doll." I said, "Why do you have a doll, mummy? You're an adult." And I remember you're not that. supposed to play with dolls, mom. Yeah, I remember, I remember that um, making her really angry, and, and I, I guess I've always spoken about atheism, and this is why most, you know, my Brazilian family hate me, because I'm quite open about it. I mean, they post on Twitter about the Pope, and um, about, um, on Twitter, sorry, on Facebook, about the Pope and various other Catholic things, and I always have something to say. Um which doesn't win me any papers. Um, so I've always spoken about it, but as for Twitter, it was actually um, my boyfriend who um, actually said, oh, you know, you're always going on um, about your anti-theisms. Why don't you join Twitter? I'm like, oh, why would I do that? Um, <laughs> and he showed me accounts like Donovan and um, Spellchecker and... Uh, I mean, I knew about Richard Dawkins through my father because my father's a biologist. Oh, fucking hell, there we go. Uh, about um, him being um, active in, in talking about atheism. So I started following him as well and a few other people. Um, and I guess I just continued being vocal on Twitter. Um, but yes, stop it, Aiden. I know what you're alluding to. You're such a freak. <laughs> um, <laughs> 
And yeah, so I, I was quite, um, I didn't know this world existed on Twitter where people spoke about atheism. I had no idea, so yeah. So I yeah, I didn't either, actually. Um, yeah. I thought I thought Twitter was so stupid for the longest time. I was like, who the fuck goes on Twitter and like just tweets about stuff that you do all day? Like, right? I just ate a sandwich. It was good. <laughs> Hashtag yum. I do that. Yeah. I take pictures of my food. I'm so guilty of that. <laughs> I did I earlier. Have, I have totally yet tweeted to fall about into the, the food tweets. I don't think I'm gonna do that. Unless I had a tweet nice. about my cake. It was delicious. That did look like a delicious cake, and I am upset that you didn't like present it to us or anything. Come to Idaho. I'll share a piece. You come um, to Washington and make me cake. <laughs> so, um, I have a really random question for you. What's your favorite hashtag, Ra? Um, oh, favorite hashtag... I think anything that antagonizes Deepak Chopra. So I quite like um, the one that I created, which was Cosmic Fuck Wankrig. So it, he's often in my mentions um, <laughs> because I really upset him. Um, his latest Avi before this one, he looked exactly like Mrs. Doubtfire, and he was really upset with me when I tweeted Aww. about it. <laughs> I, I, I love Deepak. He's, he's genuinely one of my favourites. Uh, if, if you follow Wisdom of uh, Chopra, um, it, it, it's actually uh, it's just a, a random generator that generates words, and his tweets make more sense than Deepak's. Oh, that's beautiful. Wow. It's, uh, it, it, it's one of my favourite Twitter accounts, and my favourite hashtags you? in order. Would you like to know my favourite hashtags? No. Sure. First is hashtag fact because I use it all the time. <laughs> uh, second is hashtag all hashtags are true. Um, a good one. And third is uh, hashtag fuck Islam, because it pisses people right off. Nice. I like hashtag anal, because I just like to yeah, just put it anal works. <laughs> People will be having a really intellectual conversation, uh, you know, something that I... I I'll never be able to do, and um, I'll just drop in and just leave hashtag anal, and it will completely yeah. <laughs> derail the conversation. <laughs> I think I've seen you do that a couple of times, actually. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I, 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 I often hashtag blue waffle. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because it's just great, it's especially if people don't know what it is. <laughs> they will do the last shit and they will regret it the second they press search. So, because immediately after, people are like, what the fuck is Blue Waffle? Right. Way to, yeah. way to derail. It is pleasant. That's beautiful. Oh, man. <laughs> you guys are such an inspiration. Seriously. We try. A filth. <laughs> well, Candice, what's your favorite hashtag? Uh, I don't know. I wasn't expecting to answer my own question. Hashtag Raygate, because I love fucking listening to Ray and Adam. Um, I I just I, I crack up. Uh, like the the first time I was listening to you guys, um, I like literally cried. I was laughing so hard. Um, so I just I follow it. I'm like, when are they coming out with something new? There's, a, uh, there's, actually, uh, there's actually a phone in tomorrow night uh, with uh, with Ray and Raylene. Oh, um, really? I'm sure. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, uh, if, if you look on, I retweeted it a while ago, look on Adam's page, the, uh, yeah, the, the details are there. But can I just say, I had no idea about it. He commits me to do these things. I could have plans, <laughs> which I don't. I don't have a life. But I could have plans. I could be doing something. But I'm just informed by Adam, or he will be on a you know, on a phone end tomorrow. Never mind if you have to work or do anything at all. You'll be on the phone end. Right. I agreed to do this one Ray gate about six months ago, and it's been going now forever and ever. <laughs> no, I, I, Ray, gate, Ray gate was a great day. It, it, it was, was brilliant. One of it my favorite days on Twitter. 
Yeah, it no, was really I, good. I gotta say, I did listen to uh, the latest um, uh, episode that y- you and Candace were on, actually, yeah. and that was brilliant. That was just brilliant. It, it was. Can you say Shumsky yet, um, Candace? No, no, I can't. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Shum the sham Shumsky. Shumsky. <laughs> Spunksky. I had such a hard time with it. And I was so nervous too. I was like, I don't even like uh, I was I was really, really nervous and so that just totally fucked up my speech. And then the fact that I couldn't say it was just hilarious to me and so I just couldn't say it even more. Did you see that Adam um, added all the problem. outtakes of you saying it at yes. the end? Yeah, that was yeah, awesome. That was hilarious. <laughs> well, and Adam's Adam's a really funny guy too. Um, it was really interesting because he just called me and he was like, "Hey, Candace, I think you should do this." And I'm like, "Okay, when?" He's like, "How about an hour from now?" <laughs> yeah. Welcome okay. to my life. Okay. I get phone calls <laughs> at two o'clock in the morning saying, "Can you do a podcast?" I'm like, "Well, no, because I'm I'm sleeping." And he's like, oh, no, that'll be fine, it'll be fine. Just do a podcast. I like, oh, Adam, I have to work in three hours. And he's like, yeah, it won't take long. So he just phones me randomly at whatever time it suits him and tells me that I am yeah, doing um, it. And, and, and he will phone you when he's bored. Like, yes. if he's on the way to work, if he's drinking coffee in the garden, he'll yes. phone you and just chat. Yeah. yeah. The one we did with Aiden was, I, I'd say it's probably my, still my all-time favourite, where he was... Um, the Twitter support, um, oh, and yes. he had to do different accents, and um, he was... And then uh, Noah was Deepak, wasn't he? Yeah, he was Deepak. No, I was Deepak. You were, yeah, and it, and it was really... Well, in, you both were Deepak. Yeah. And it, that that's still really but, my favourite. No, 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 but we are all Deepak. Yeah. We are <laughs> all Deepak. Where there's a little oh photon, That's gonna be you will find a little bit of Deepak. <laughs> Two minds, three testicles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, okay, so I'm going to pop brilliant. over to Twitter here real quick and grab a couple of these questions that have popped up. Um, Tim. Are you guys okay or, to continue going? Yeah, I mean, um, oh, yeah. That's right. We're running a little bit over time here, but I feel like we're having a very good uh, organic discussion. No, it's well, fine. I've moved uh-huh. my, uh, my anal bleaching appointment for 9 o'clock, so we're fine. Well, Aiden okay. did say that he was going to pass out like directly after the one-hour mark, Oh. which I totally understand. Um, no, I just wanted to make sure that you guys were still good. No, no, carry on. The fucking sun's up now. We'll try to wrap it up quickly here. Um... But Tim, or at Uncle PG, um, well, first he says that his favorite uh, hashtag, hashtag apparently is help, I need an adult. Um, but he, <laughs> uh, <laughs> he asks if uh, we have ever asked a theist, or we, if we have ever asked if a theist had difficulty believing in parts of their religion or writings, Bible, Koran, etc., uh, no, no, because they, uh, they, they, they have context, don't they? They just, it's, 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 it's just a waste of time asking them. They'll just say, um, the, the parts I will pick out for them, uh, when mm-hmm. I say, what does this mean? Uh, like when I say to uh, like Muslims, I'll say to them, uh, what does it mean uh, in the Quran where it says, um, kill all apostates, slay them wherever you find them? Uh, they'll, they'll just say, oh, this was... This was only meant um, at the time, in a time of war, uh, when they were protecting their own lands. That's what they'll say, whereas they'll take the rest of it as no pun intended gospel. Um, So um, it is just a sort of fruitless endeavour. It is worth highlighting these things to people, but whether they pay attention is just another matter. I spoke to a lady um, over the last couple of days um, who's been popping into my mentions. Um, It is... Well, hmm. that shit crazy, really. But um, she said to me that uh, the reason that atheists don't live a Christian life is because it's too hard. And I said, okay. I said, so if you live a Christian life, then you must live by the Scripture in its full entirety. And she said, I do. And I said, okay. So including the Old Testament. 
she clearly hasn't read her holy book of wacky bollocks because she said yes. So I said, so you keep slaves, you don't wear mixed fibers, you don't eat shrimp, you don't shave your legs, you um, force your daughter to marry her rapist. And she said, well, none of that is in the Bible. And oh. Then I just, oh, she never read it. Then I just <laughs> sent her a few images of you know my little Bible app. Um, and she was like, oh, well, no, but, but that's context. I said, okay. So the, and then she said, oh, well, the Old Testament is, is um, no longer valid. I said, oh, well, this is awkward because Matthew 5, um, 17 says that um, he's come to fulfill all of the laws of the prophets. And she was like, oh, I didn't know that was in the Bible. With so a sword in <laughs> Yeah, they don't know they don't know their Bible and she didn't know I said well you can't discard the Old Testament because you take the Ten Commandments from it and of course the bit about you know that little sort of nebulous bit about homosexuals that's what you use to oppress and you know right. peddle your bigotry right, right. homosexuals and she was very confused and then she disappeared yeah um, I, I, had a, I had a guy the other week who told me that uh, Matthew was the least reliable of the Gospels I, um, I, I five seventeen in which I often do it to theists, um, and, uh, and he said to me, Matthew is the least reliable of the Gospels, and I said, uh, could you give me them in order of reliability so that I don't make this mistake again in the future? Um, he refused to do that, and then I said, of course. Could you right. could you tell me why Matthew is less reliable than say John? And then he said, well, John's not particularly reliable either. Um, so I said, could you tell me why Matthew and John aren't as reliable as is it Luke and Mark? Mark. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, and and he just he just disappeared and he blocked me. They do that, <laughs> don't they? They just disappear. Yeah. But that's good. That's a good thing. That means you're you're sowing seeds of cognitive dissonance. So that's awesome. Good for you. Both yeah. of you. Yeah, but I, I I get them come back like months later. <laughs> And, and, and they'll just come back with nonsense. And it's obviously taken them quite a while to sort of come up with a rebuttal. And they'll come <laughs> back and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll just destroy it in one tweet. And I've, I, I feel almost harsh replying to them sometimes. But, right, like you kind of just want to leave them in their, uh, their mental state. I find it awesome how just a little bit of logic can make people shut the fuck up about their stupid beliefs. Yeah. It's pretty mm. easy. So I like it, um, Aiden. When you when you do destroy them and you do a little play about it, that's my favourite. Yeah. The atheist blobfish plays. Yeah, I sometimes I, I, plagiarise I, them. I, I, I don't think I've done one own. this weekend. Yeah, you Maybe I'll do one. They're my favourite. There you go. Something. Yeah, they're all taken that? from uh, Twitter conversations. So. Yeah, what started your uh, your blobfish plays? Play. Um, I, I don't know. It was just like a, a little thing I did to to sort of start off. Um, I often sort of when I'm updating on Facebook, I'll um, I'll sort of put a play together of what's happened to me, uh, and it's just the sort of format I'm comfortable with. Uh, I, I like writing plays anyway, uh, so I just do the short ones, and it's a bit of a challenge to get them inside 140. Um, mm. And yeah, it's. It's just fun to blow people's heads up. Oh, they're brilliant! I absolutely love. I think you should do a little collection of them and publish. Yeah, well, um, I, I, I'm actually trying to, uh, and I've asked uh, one of our friends to draw them, but he's a lazy wanker and he hasn't. Careful now! You don't want to be drawing that prophet. Yeah. Oh no. Oh, I definitely draw Muhammad, or I, I just have famous Muhammads just playing him, like Muhammad Ali. Oh, fantastic. Uh, I didn't have to tickle you. Uh, Jake actually tweeted saying that somebody needs to tickle Ra and make her laugh, and <laughs> mission accomplished. Right, there you go. <laughs> Jake Bible reloaded Jake or another Jake? Um, uh, Far Jordan. Morton. Yeah, Far oh, Morton. Oh, brilliant. Good guy. Um, just, just, just out of interest, why doesn't, uh, why doesn't Jake host this show? Because he does host every single show. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, I I personally think it enriched the show. I think it enriched the show. Oh, he did a great job on Atheist Hangouts last week. 
well, fair uh, enough. We should we talk have, to Jake. Yeah, we have an Maybe. application process, so you know we can go through that. Yeah. yeah, we'll send it over to him. Yeah. Um, since we're going over to Twitter here, kind of uh, Mr. Cordy Mendoza, I think he wants to start a fight or something because he's uh, asking the both of you, um, what bothers you the most about Americans? Oh, brilliant. Oh, um, really, Cordy? I know. Oh, let me think. Such a, such a well, what, great what selection. Well, you're thinking, I'll, I'll answer that. Um, I, I've got a real love for America because um, I lived in Rhode Island for quite a number of years and I had a really positive experience and I go back to America every year um, to see friends and who are like family. Um, so I, I don't, maybe it's because I've had this positive experience and I don't think every American is like, you know, a, um, a redneck Texan. Um, my experience of Americans are that they're well educated, um, kind, lovely, warm people and um, unfortunately on Twitter you do get the Americans who are the you know the sort of Bible thumpers um, mm -hmm. with the stupid Benghazi uh, um, ribbon um, right. and that that's always you know a sign um, but I think it's a bit unfair to say that's just Americans because you, you know, you get that from all sorts of people. I mean, there are a few crazy um, Christians um, that are British. I mean, my stalker, Uncle Fester the Child um, Molester. Um, who, <laughs> that's why I call him Uncle Fester. Actually, I don't know if he uh, has children, but I suspect that he probably has a fiddle. Um, and that, actually, I can't back that up. Don't sue me, Uncle Fester. Um, <laughs> but you probably do. <laughs> he's, he's, um, kidding, not kidding. Kidding, not kidding. Rapey, rapey. Sorry, he's, not sorry. He he has that rape culture vibe. You know about rape culture, Aiden. Um, <laughs> Professor Snow's culture. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, he he's English, or he might be Irish. Anyway, same thing. Um, so there are plenty, oh. plenty of British. Fuck it, out, That was a bit broad. <laughs> British crazy um, fierce. It's not just Americans. Maybe. Oh, good. It's... Yeah, um, I mine is the sort of the apathy. Uh, like the religious right are like America's racist uncle. They they still invite him round for dinner, uh, even though uh, he insists on calling um, people of colour boy. Um, it's 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 just ridiculous. Like they are a minority, the Bible thumpers, um, but they they speak for the majority, and um, I I just think you roll over and take it a bit too easily. Right, right, yeah. It's uh, no, they're really not. They're kind of that uncle that you tell the kids not to be in a in a room alone with. Yeah. yeah. No, and I think it's funny that because uh, we talked about this a kind of uh, with of Donovan house. when we had him on about how what huh oh I think you're freaking out Candace or are you frozen no um but yeah we we kind of had this same conversation with Donovan how that uh, like Americans are so nice and so awesome and I have a theory a hypothesis that. Americans love people with British or Australian accents, and that's really the only reason that they're very nice to you. Because they hear you and they automatically think, you know, oh. Yes, but when I lived in America, I sounded completely American. I know that's hard to believe, but I was a child, so I, I had yeah. an American accent. So, I, I mean, I'm not kidding. I find Americans to be um, very nice. I, I don't have this sort of um, stereotype of, of um, where I think all Americans are like the you know the, the sort of idiotic <coughs> um, theists, excuse me, that you get on Twitter. Um, you know, I, I think in England um, the difference, um, and, and I think Aidan's saying that you guys roll over and take it too easily. Um, in England, if anyone I think tried to um, you know, 
preach and uh, be forceful with their religion, people would just say, oh, just fuck off, you're, you know, you're being a cunt. Um, it, it's just not the done thing here. I mean, I chased after a Jehovah's Witness the other day down the street um, because <laughs> I don't usually do these what? things. <clears throat> Excuse me, got a frog in my throat. Um, on on my um, letterbox, and this is not a euphemism for vagina, it's actual letterbox, there's right. a little um, sticker that says no junk mail um, or any, you know, sort of um, advertising. And I was about to go out the door, I was about to put my key in the door, and this leaflet came in about Bible study. And, of course, I thought... Oh, you fucker, didn't you see my little label there saying no junk mail? And this is the ultimate junk mail. And as I was on my way out anyway, I opened mm -hmm. the door, I took the leaflet and opened the door, and he was very speedy because by then he was about four houses down. Wow. And I said to him, I said, Oi, didn't you see my label that says no junk mail? And he went, but that's not junk mail. That's, that's about Bible study and it's the word of the Lord. I said, I don't give a fuck about your demented Bronze Age rantings. I said, don't put them through my letterbox. I said, or else I'm going to roll it up and shove it up where the sun don't shine. And by then he was running down the street. And I was going, don't come back. I, I know if you come back. I said, I've got your address here on the leaflet where the church is. I said, don't make me turn up. I know where you pray. <laughs> and he disappeared. But... It's just very rare that you should get um, people trying to shove religion down your throat here. Just not. Yeah, really um, I'm, 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 I'm blacklisted by the Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, I've, I've answered the door and invited them in and destroyed them. I've answered the door naked a few times um, and invited them in. They never come in, strangely enough. Um, we have little uh, stalls in our city centre now where they, where they sort of congregate and have like signs like what does the Bible really teach and I'll go up and I'll talk to them uh, but now they just sort of wave politely and let me pass by so oh, uh, yeah, uh, most most people here will just tell you to fuck off if you bring Jesus up mm. Wow. and uh, if, if you bring Muhammad up everyone just stays silent and hopes they avoid uh, being called racist yeah that's, oh, uh, Islamophobic actually... Aiden don't forget yeah, I'm the biggest Islamophobe oh, in the yeah. world. How can you be... Uh, right. Somewhere. No, no, I, 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 I genuinely get nervous around brown people, so... Well, that's that's a, a different thing than, you know, being... Having He's a... joking. Well, I know, I know. He's joking. See, I, I actually am a... Uh, you can change my Racist. mind about a lot of things. You can change my mind about a lot of things. But the one thing that you cannot change my mind about is Islam. It, I, I cannot stand it. It is not a religion of peace. It is not any of these things. It is a horrible, horrible, horrible blight on society. Islamophobe! Whatever. Uh, racist. I, I do Ra, you not already have this. an irrational fear of an idea. Pedophile phobe! Fear of well, actually, I don't even have an irrational fear. There is valid fear behind well, what these people believe. Did you not see my discussion yesterday on Twitter? No, no he totally ignores you. Oh, I've been uh, sick and not on Twitter. So <laughs> yesterday, um, some yeah, today. Gosh. Uh, well, yes. Today, Sam, you're looking for it. Today for you. Today, uh, <laughs> a um misguided young lady tweeted um, that she doesn't mind um, criticism of Islam but um, she doesn't like Islamophobia so I, I very politely asked what is Islamophobia and then all of this you know conjecture came out all this crap of how it's racism and bigotry and stereotyping and I said well I'm sorry how Islam how is criticism of Islam racist I said what race is Islam and of course you know she came undone because she had no idea what she was talking about she didn't know her right. elbow from her ass right. she was conflating Muslims with Islam she couldn't differentiate that actually you can criticize an ideology which which is harmful, um, where scriptures are telling you to slay people, where people are flying planes into buildings and beheading people on the street in the name of these scriptures. You can 
criticize this without it being racist, without it being bigotry and stereotyping. And she couldn't differentiate between the two. And I said to her, when you pull out this Islamophobia card, what you do is you try and silence very valid criticism of harmful ideologies. A phobia in its you know, definition is an irrational fear. Right. It isn't irrational to fear being beheaded or being you know, killed for drawing a profit or being killed um, for writing a book about Islam. Um, or even for simply having a disagreement of what the scripture actually means. Exactly. I mean, it, it's fucking ridiculous. It, like, comparable, I try to compare it, make people in fucking the, the states understand where I'm coming from with this. It's comparable to fucking Catholics killing off um, you know, Seventh Day Adventists in the streets. Yeah. You know, that's exactly. what it, it's comparable to. It's like, you, would you tolerate that within your religion? Would you expect mm. that? No. This is what's happening in Islam. And if you want to talk about pedophilia, so, now some of the practices that uh, come along with Islam, like Google it, thighing. Oh, Google. no, I, I can't, no. I yeah. know what it is, but I can't Google it. It just it's, makes me really stabby. There's all sorts of re- Ridiculous, ridiculous shit. And if you really want to talk about pedophilia, Islam. That that's actually probably my favorite hashtag right there. Islam, the religion of pedophiles. Mm. It, it's it's ghastly. Off, but it's yeah, ab- it's absolutely ghastly. Like, you can't you can't talk about it. And uh, you know, people seem to think they're entitled to their own facts. They're not can have an opinion on absolutely anything the fuck you want. You are not entitled to your own facts. And if I want to have an opinion on Islam, I will. It, you know, it's and it is a fact that Islamic barbarity and violence is a problem and it isn't irrational to fear it. It right. isn't irrational to fear as a woman that if you're going to read a book like Malala because you want to further your education, that you're going to get shot in the head. Or those two girls that were dancing in the rain, they were shot. That rape victims are imprisoned and stoned to death. It's oh. not irrational to fear that. I mean, I know, I know people say, oh, FGM is not an Islamic thing. I know FGM does not originate in Islam. But in the United Kingdom, especially where I live, where there's a big Islamic population, FGM is entirely carried out, or in its major in its majority, by the Islamic community. Whether it's Islamic or not, I couldn't give a flying fuck. The Islamic community is perpetuating it, and we don't speak about it because we don't want to upset people of the Islamic community. This this taboo is forbidden, and we mustn't talk about it. Well, guess what? Fuck you. I am talking about it. Right. I mean, when it comes down to a point where, you know, people are afraid to criticize your religion, that's a problem. That's a major problem where people are afraid of you killing them because you're speaking out against the religion. I mean, mm-hmm. that is just... Ah, it's outrageous. Fucking ridiculous. Well, if, if well, Islam um, wants to be respected and wants to fit in with contemporary society. It needs to demonstrate this via its actions. Until then, it's, it's all not going to. service. It's not going to. When we, I mean, it was just earlier this week, last week, when Saudi Arabia uh, declared that atheists are terrorists. Mm-hmm. Um, right. Any, anything questioning the Islamic faith is an act of terrorism. So um, I just, I really don't see that happen in the near future. Um, I I know um, we're having a a good discussion, but I do want to not go so far that nobody watches it. Yeah, we are running into um, over an hour and a half here. We should probably start wrapping this up. um, Did you guys have any questions for us? No. 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 Is there anything that you wanted to promote or say that you felt like... Get to say. Um, yeah, if, if if I come on again, uh, I'd like to promote the idea of uh, a global clock. Um, <laughs> time zones exist. Uh, right. I, right. I would like my next uh, appearance on this show to be during sunset rather than sunrise. 
So that would be early in the morning for us. That would be like no, that would be like that'd be like midday, noon. which would be a normal yeah, time. For us. Acceptable, you know. We could do a pre-recorded yeah, show. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I, I don't have anything to promote. Um, I put, or, or maybe just don't be stupid. That's a good promotion. You want to? No, no, you want Yeah, we do. Come on, Ethan. You're brilliant. I, I know, I know. And and, that, and I say that because you know, don't make me publish the messages that you send to me about my Jewishness. Yeah, well, uh, I've, I've, I have genuinely got some of the best anti-Semitic jokes uh, on the planet. Want to want to throw throw one our way? Uh, I, I I just think of random Jews, and that's what I call Ra for the day. So the other day yeah, okay. she was uh, she was Woody Allen's daughter. Um, I think probably best crazy. that I tell them that <clears throat> I have got some Jewish background on my father's side of the family. Oh, shit, Secular Jews. <laughs> nice. All right. Rob, was there anything that you uh, wanted to promote or uh, felt you still needed to say? Nah, just don't be a cunt. Beautiful. All right. No, 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 no. Hold on. Don't, don't say don't be a cunt. Say try not to be a cunt. Try. Um, because I'm sometimes sorry. Fun, try not to fun, be a cunt. Sometimes you just can't help it. Your patriarchy is oppressing me. Professor right. Snape I culture. I matriarch your face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Candice, how about you? Is there anything that you wanted to This is This is typical canopy culture. I've just... <laughs> right? How, da- how, da- how dare you speak, woman? Timothy. Mm. Timothy. <laughs> No. <laughs> no. Don't have any. Um, no. No. I, I I second what what Ross said. Try not to be a cunt. And that's about it. I I missed about half the conversation. Maybe like two thirds. So you didn't miss. But you can rewatch it. Uh, you could promote it now. You could you could tell people where to watch it. Oh yeah. 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 The YouTube channel. Yeah. David, why don't you finish up? Awesome. All right. Well. That's all of it. Um, time to, for some promotions for uh, what we're doing next. Um, next week is our Easter show. We are going to have uh, Steve, Amanda, my lovely wife Deanna, and myself. We're going to be talking about Easter, discussing secular parenting, how we celebrate Easter, and how we can try and thwart the zombie Jesus, um, and why we have to eat peeps and chocolate bunnies. Um, so tune in next week at 9.30. We're going to be discussing that. And I have something that I wanted to promote, actually. Sorry, I have to put you all through this. Um, but just as a reminder, I mentioned a couple episodes ago that my wife and I are going to be participating in the Washington Warrior Dash on July 19th. We officially have our websites up, so we're able to take sponsorships and donations so that we can go ahead and uh, get some money towards the St. Jude's Children's Hospital there. Um, can you tweet that, that um, to us, David, so that we can retweet it for you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I have a link up. I'm going to put them in the descriptions, and I'll be having them in the descriptions of all of our videos from here on out. Um, And I can go ahead and tweet that to both of you, absolutely. Um, And just as a a reminder for everyone out there freaking out at the name of St. Jude, if you do your research and you look it up, it is a completely 100% secular organization. It does not have any ties to the Catholic Church. Thank fucking God, and uh, it Pretty is a cult. Kids. <laughs> right, thank <laughs> Oh, no. Hey, no, Jen, no. The... We're doing this for the kids, man, so that they get get away uh-huh. from the priest. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's a full 501c3 charity organization. All of the money that we raise are going to go straight towards the charity, and I, I, I put my goal at 1000 bucks. so um, help. <laughs> Did you uh, just do like a pray? Yeah, like I, gonna... I, yeah, I noticed well, that. Well. Oh, 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 what did I? <laughs> all of this David. talk. I'm so disappointed in you. You had a relapse okay. five on air. Oh, oh he, he no, did. No, no, no. Hold on, hold he on, totally hold on. did. Nobody, nobody give to this because if he gets a thousand dollars, that's confirmation bias. He could become a Christian. <laughs> right. <laughs> 
So wow. I would really? encourage everybody to not give to his page, give to his wife's. So I need to go and pray to his noodliness, uh, noodliness. Uh, yeah. Say some uh, some uh, pastas for for my sins. Um, David. So, David. I don't know. Is that is that David? Yes. What? David. Huh? Is that a bong behind you? Is that a bong? <laughs> A, like a marijuana, you know, a cannabis bong. Oh no, that's a hookah. Although I have. Oh, right. oh disappointment. Yeah, it you know, uh, hasn't gotten very much use, but it has seen its fair share of of uh, the cannabis, you could say. Oh. It's kind of difficult when you know I I don't have any kind of budget to. Um, Can I just point out the drugs are illegal? Oh. Right, not in Washington. Ah. Not in Washington. Yep. No. Not in Washington, so I can talk about it yeah. as much as I like. So you're saying all kids should do drugs? No, I'm saying that you should wait. <laughs> for the to Pretty clear what you said. So. Well, not all kids. Yeah. I mean, obviously there are some kids that should. Now, yeah, serious. I mean, really said all kids should take drugs. Fuck if, if they're cool enough, sure, I suppose. And I really Don't feel like. Bella and Jaden He was such a shit star. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for joining us and sitting through our craziness. We would love to have both of you back on. This was amazing. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you for having us. It's been really fun. Absolutely. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Follow us on Twitter at ProfitCast. You can also find us on the web, www.thoughtprofits.com. Um, joining our discussions on Google and Facebook. Facebook. Oh man, I'm getting tired. Uh, by searching. Are you for getting a little oh. tired? Would you like Deepak to take over? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Follow us. Join us next week at 9:30 Pacific Standard Time. And you have a godless night. <laughs>